It is semi-main event time as the towering Thai fighter Wei Han from the King Boxing Gym in Thailand makes his way to Centering. 121 fights, 101 wins. Can he make it number 102 against Nathan the Carnage Corbin? The Carnival of Carnage rolls into Centering once more. As world champion Nathan Corbett makes his way to the ring here at Evolution 14. Facing a very tall customer in Way Hard. Over the ropes goes Corbett. And in a few moments time we'll be ready for full tie rules action in the Cruiserweight division. We are set for five by three. Full tie rules, knees and elbows, all the good stuff in our semi-main event. Corbett only the two losses in his career. Both knockout losses against Paul Slewinski and Alex Roberts, who both now fight in the K1 and heavyweight. All right. All right. All right, OK. Start. Oh, here we go, first round of five. Michael Chavello and the former Australian champion, Hammermark Castellini, with your inside from the Chandler Arena, the sold out Chandler Arena here in Brisbane. Big lead kick from Weihan, fighting Southpaw. Always dangerous, the rangy tie, but uh, against the power, the sheer power of the Grim Reaper, Nathan the Carnage Corbett. I really can't see him being uh, up there on the aggressive meter of the power levels that the Carnage oh, yeah, possesses, bang, bang. boys. You know, Corbett oh. wants to get on the inside, wants to drop the body shots, the liver, wants to fire the golden elbows. Well, Weihard doesn't want to get caught on the ropes. That's going to be the worst place in the world for him against the Carnage. He wants to be in centre ring because as soon as he's on the ropes, that's giving uh, Carnage the range right there for uh, for him to not be able to go anywhere and then he's going to unload right on him and he can bet even if he's got his guard up he's just going to elbow at his arm in an attempt to break the arm you know corbett wants to get on the inside here he's almost agoraphobic hates being outside loves being inside and he tries to thread the right elbow there's a snappy jab from the australian and Weihan, the South Four, returns the favour. Well, have a look at the absolute speed of that jab of Corbett. That was beautifully done. And uh, he's certainly looking on at, in these early stages of this battle. All tied up. In the neutral okay. corner. Break, break, break. And the Murph breaks them. Oh. Semi-main event still to come here tonight. John Wayne Parr and Jabba Askarad. Rip kick off the rear leg, then slings the inside thigh of Corbett as Weihart. Very tall tie. It's not usual that you see ties this tall. And a nice left hand there by Corbett. Just didn't turn the knuckles in, though, to really cleanly connect. Loses his footing. Oh, just lost his footing out. Michael, the uh, fight science statistics say that a right hand delivers 290 kilos of power delivered to the target. And you can bet if, if Corbett uh, loads up his right hand, it's going to be every one of those kilos unloaded on the on the head there of the time. Nice to see Weihan lining up the elbows of his own as Corbett connects with another right cross to the jaw and Weihan just shrugs off the Aussie. Corbett brings it back to centre and jets the low kick. Snaps up the jab again, outside Fikey. Weihan momentarily in orthodox stance now, the tie has switched. Throws the overhand elbow off the right arm. Surprised that Weihan hasn't actually clinched him up, you know. He's got such range, such long limbs. I think he should be uh, to negate the power of core, but he wants to really crank the neck and just hang on and start to work with the knees. Instead, he's trying to trade punches with him, and that's just silly. With a shot to end it from Corbett. End of the first round, we go to the towels. And Corbett stamping his authority early on here. As Richard Wally Walsh goes to work on Nathan Corbett over in the red corner and the team from King Jim go to work on Weihan in the blue corner. There's been a lot of discussion in recent times, Hammer, about opponents who could possibly beat Nathan Corbett around the world. 
seem that Corbett is reluctant to step up to heavyweight or go down to a lighter weight division, but is Weyhan the man to do it here tonight? Look, I think I think Weyhan is certainly... You just have to look at the, the build of the two, and Corbett is just power-packed, you know. He's right up there. He's beefed up since the weigh-in, and, you know, the tie is just on that level, on the strength of power level, he doesn't have it. We are ready to roll second round of action. Wherever you're watching our broadcast right around Australia, I hope you're enjoying it just as much as we are. Here ringside, and the carnage fires out a real leg round kick. If Corbett is going to win with the hands, perhaps what he wants to do is throw the right cross. And he's public enemy number one of the Southpaw fighter. Corbett should go clockwise, stay out of reach of Weihan's left hand, being the rear hand of the Southpaw, and continually pump that diesel piston of a right cross up the tube. Oh, As I spill to the canvas. This is, uh, I was just having a good close look at the clinch there and just see what Weihard was going to do, but uh, he actually just stalemated in the clinch and he didn't, didn't get busy. He's got to get in the clinch and then start to get busy. Weihard not afraid to trade elbows with Carnage on the inside. Big crossing elbow from the tie, downward elbow looking for the bridge of the nose. Good evasion, leans back out of the way of the kick and counters with the leg kick. Has got some very good skills on him, Weihard, but you wonder if he's got the power to be able to phase Carnage at all here. Crossing elbow from Carnage, Weihan ties him up in front of our commentary position. And the Murph keeps it nice and clean. Jab from Carnage. Weihan looking for the headache maker, but Carnage's guard, his virgin's defense, nothing penetrating. Was a right yeah, turning yeah, elbow, yeah, sorry, a left turning elbow yeah, there from the carnage. I think that got through. The big buck Troy from the carnage. This one's as good as over. Why is this tie not grappling up? Why is he not clinching? Why is he against the ropes? I do not know. This one is as good as over. Carnage lands the right hand. Oh, way has got some heart. The tie fires back. Guts and intestinal fortitude. How is he recomposed? After a carnage knocked down from the elbow! I tell you what, he's, he got up. He shook it off. He's in the fog. Down for all money. And uh, like a jack in the box, he's back on his feet, way hard. I have never seen someone get up from a carnage elbow like that. And have a look at way hard now. 30 seconds to go. This is not where he wants to be. This time is taking more hits than Google, but he is still pushing. Oh. Well, certainly it was a suicide mission on the Thai's behalf, sitting on the ropes and trying to trade with the power of uh, the carnage, the Grim Reaper, the carnage Nathan Corbett. Silly tactics from the Thai have, uh, have been his demise. You know, I would have uh, thought he would have clinched up and tried to uh, wear down Corbett, get the points up, maybe look for a takedown or two, but instead he uh, took the silly road and decided to trade and uh, paid the ultimate price of having a close-up look at the canvas. Hammer, let's have a look at that knockout elbow one more time. It was the excellence of execution, and as we always say, just one word for it, champagne! champagne. There you go. Perfectly timed elbow from Corbett. He just bided his time, timed it right, stepped through, bang, that was all she wrote, and as I said, the Thai Weihard was having a good close-up look at the Triple M logo on the canvas there. At a time of 2 minutes and 40 seconds into round number 2, your winner by way of knockout, Nathan Cody Corbett. In his 45th fight, his 43rd win, his 33rd knockout for the man with the golden elbows, 
The carnival of Garnie Grape and Corbett does it again. And the contender Asia's own Stefan Fox puts the belt around Corbett's waist.